welcome to Sri Ram Medical College. Today we will explore Operation Theatre Sterilization, Ensuring Safe and Effective Surgery When it comes to nasocomial, hospital-acquired, infections, surgical site infections, cis, rank second most common. Significant morbidity results from these post-operative complications. The surgical team, the air in the operating room, and any equipment or supplies brought into the sterile field can all contribute to the spread of infection during surgery. Most cases of external infection can be avoided if the operating room is kept sterile. The ideal size of an operating room is 6.5 meters by 6.5 meters by 3.5 meters, but the number of theaters and their dimensions might vary widely depending on need. The art building's main entrances must have sufficient width, 1.2 to 1.5 meters. It is recommended that each art have sliding doors instead of spring-loaded flap doors so that no air currents are created. In art, only flush, steel fittings are allowed. Jointless conductive tiles slash the rezo, linoleum, etc., or a surface slash flooring that is slip resistant, robust, and impervious, such a mosaic with copper plates for anti-static effect, are all good options. In order to facilitate cleaning and prevent the stagnation of water or contaminants, a continuous coved section must be used to make the floor-slash-wall junction. Due to the decline in use of flammable anesthetic chemicals, anti-static carpeting is becoming less of a necessity in modern hospitals. If you want a tile-free or chip-free wall, don't go with tiles or epoxy paint. Instead, choose for laminated polyester or smooth paint. Steel or aluminium plates should be used to cover up any sharp edges of drywall, and the paint should be bright enough to reflect light while yet being easy on the eyes. A washable paint in a light color, such a pale blue or green, will work great. The eyes of the art crew will be less straining with a semi-matte wall surface than one with a highly gloss finish. It is advised to have one operating table for every operating room. Wall outlets, sufficient wall outlets, at a height of at least 1.5 meters above the floor. Dual insulated ground wires and an earth wire will be installed in a concealed plastic or metal conduit for the electrical system. There must be an IPS, up system installed in the mechanical room. It is recommended that all lighting be recessed sealed fluorescent, preferably with prismatic control and dimmable for theaters. Sterilization is an important aspect of operating theater, art, management to ensure the safety of patients and healthcare workers. It is the process of eliminating or reducing all forms of microbial life, including fungi, bacteria, and viruses, on a surface or object to a level that is safe for human contact. This is accomplished by using physical, chemical, or biological methods. In an operating theater, sterilization is essential to prevent the transmission of infections from person to person or from objects to people. It is important to follow proper sterilization protocols to ensure that all instruments and surfaces are free of harmful microorganisms. Cleaning is more crucial than sterilization and disinfection in the upkeep of operating theaters because it removes pollutants, dust, and organic waste. Bacteria can be kept at bay by maintaining a clean, dry floor. Bacteria, other than spores, die off naturally in dry environments. Clean the floor with a vacuum or damp mop it. Sweepers should be avoided since they contribute to the proliferation of microorganisms in the air. 
plant life can be cut by roughly 80% when using a simple detergent. To bring down by 95%, add a disinfectant. Avoid using ceiling fans, as they can distribute aerosols and lead to more roof damage. There are several methods of sterilization that can be used in an operating theater, including Heat sterilization method involves using high temperatures to kill microorganisms. It can be done using an autoclave, which uses steam under pressure, or by dry heat sterilization, which uses hot air. Safe and effective against bacteria, spores, viruses, and fungi, autoclave sterilization is the preferred method of sterilizing. To do this, Everything within the autoclave must be arranged in a specific way to ensure that steam can go unimpeded. No stacking is allowed. Protect yourself from germs and wounds by wearing gloves whenever you handle instruments. After that, the time scale, temperature, and pressure are modified. After the autoclave reaches the set temperature and pressure, the timing can begin. When the autoclave's pressure gauge reaches O, oh, the lid can be opened. Prior to usage, everything must be dried. Water-soaked packs can't be relied upon to be sanitary. Contents, processing date, and use by date must all match what is printed on the label. Chemical sterilization method involves using chemicals to kill microorganisms. Common chemicals used for this purpose include glutaraldehyde and hydrogen peroxide. Chemical sterilization requires four trays, one for the Sedex solution and three for sterile water. The three trays are for storing sharp instruments after they have been soaked in an active solution of Sedex, 2% glutaraldehyde, for 15 minutes and then rinsed three times with sterile water. Radiation sterilization method involves using ionizing radiation, such as gamma rays or electron beam radiation, to kill microorganisms. It is important to follow proper procedures and protocols when sterilizing instruments and surfaces in the operating theater to ensure the safety of patients and healthcare workers. This may include wearing personal protective equipment, pay, such as gloves and gowns, and following proper decontamination procedures. Ventilation in an operating room, or, is based on the premise of supplying filtered air under positive pressure in a vertical, one-way flow over the operating table. Air in an operating room should be between 18 and 24 degrees Celsius, with humidity between 55 and 80 percent and with at least 25 air changes per hour. Curtains of laminar airflow or radial exponential airflow pattern that diverts air away from the surgical region are extremely useful. The acceptable bacterial count of air in a surgical or that offers facilities for most types of operation is l ft 3 m 3 Filtered air entering the operating room should have a bacterial load of no more than 0.5-M3. The airborne bacterial count in the first 30 cm around the operating table should be less than 10-M3, and it should be less than 20-M3 in the rest of the operating room. First, after each usage. Separate the sharp from the blunt tools, and then disassemble them as soon as possible. Instruments used in the processing of data are cleaned by removing all traces of dirt and organic materials. To do this, one can either use sterile distilled water to clean the equipment or use a mechanical ultrasonicator. Brushing the goods Rinsing them in clean water, and drying them are all part of the manual cleaning process. 
in order to reduce the likelihood of spreading germs, mechanical cleaning is recommended. Particles can be lifted off equipment with the help of an ultrasonic ator, which uses sound waves at a frequency of 1 lakh hertz to form submicroscopic bubbles in a liquid, which then implode. Join Sri Ram Medical College's Bachelor of Vocation in Operation Theatre Technology and take the first step toward a successful career in Operation Theatre Technologist. We are here to assist you in launching your career as an Operation Theatre Technologist. Call us at 9968193009 for more information about our program or to submit an application right away. Sri Ram Medical College, nurturing next generation of healthcare leaders, and offers all paramedical courses at competitive fee and helps in 100% placement assistance. Admission open. For more information, please visit our website sriramcollege.com and like, share, subscribe, our YouTube channel Sri Ram Medical College. Good luck, goodbye.